Okay, hi everyone, Kirk Miller here from AEM Electronics. You've seen some of our product development on the EV and some of our field testing, it's been done at the track, but we also need to do street validation, making sure that we want it to perform at every level that we need to perform at. I'm gonna walk you through one of the vehicles that was lent to us by the good people at EV West. This is a 1964 Volkswagen bus. It is rated for one ton, believe it or not, and it is an EV conversion. This is one of their work mules. It actually runs around town down, to, down at their office, picking up parts and people use it on weekends for surf trips and such. And it really is an awesome, fun conversion. But like many EV conversions, we see some points where there's some areas for refinement. So we're gonna take this vehicle that is a lot of fun and we're gonna try to make it more fun. Walk with me around this vehicle as we take a look at this, referred to as the Rust Bus. <music> Okay, this is the propulsion component of this vehicle. Air-cooled motor out. This had originally a 1.5 liter, 40 horsepower engine. In its place is a Hyper 9 AC motor. It makes about 120 horsepower, so we're at three times the original power, which makes this a little more fun to drive, especially at low speeds and low gear, and I'll get into that as well. So we've got the motor, the inverter up top. We've got two chargers all the way up in the front. And then we've got our contactor box, you know, off on the left-hand side of the vehicle. So air-cooled out, EV in, with adding our products to this, our VCU, our keypad, our PDU, and our BMS, all with the goal of increasing the overall fun and reliability of this vehicle to make it more enjoyable for the driver. Like I said, it's a, it's a really nice conversion, and it is fun, no doubt, but the drivability where between your XL, D-cell, and Regen, things like that, we're gonna refine this, and we're gonna make it much more enjoyable to drive and add some levels of safety, especially with our VMS integrated to the system. So it's an awesome ride. It's a bitching conversion. It's fun to drive, and we're gonna try to improve on all that. Not such an easy task, but we're gonna make it happen. Okay, so now we're inside the Rust Bus. We're testing our, our BMS and our VCU on one of these conversions. And you're kind of fortunate because you're at the leading edge of what we're coming out with right now. So we use a lot of acronyms, like with the internal combustion engine world, TPS, TDC, and such. We use them here as well. So BMS stands for Battery Management System. And simply put, it is managing your battery packs, making sure that you have a safe charge, giving you battery state, and if there's something wrong or something going sideways in one of the cells or one of the packs, it's gonna report back to the VCU. Right here what I have is two beta modules. There's a, an actual BMS master and a satellite. And if you're familiar with these at all, typically they don't look like this. These are billet enclosures with waterproof connectors. So these will actually sit, they can sit outside of a battery box. They don't have to be mounted inside or in, in a location protected from the elements or from the environment. So that's a huge step up for, for a BMS in itself. The battery packs themselves, 60 volts, 60 volts, 60 kilowatts. These are parallel packs, come together in series, give you 120 volts and 60 kilowatts. The range on this baby right now is up over 200 miles, according to EV West and some of the people who've run it around. I drove it up from EV West to AEM, and for those who don't know, that's 85 miles in a straight line, no problem. One of the challenges that we found in the EV conversion market was all these different verticals of products. So you had your BMS in a vertical, your inverter in a vertical, and some of the other devices throughout. The BMS that I'm showing you is actually a hardware extension of our VCU. So it only works with the VCU. The VCU does all of the heavy lifting, all the heavy calculations, and these two devices actually get the information. The satellite gets the information of the master, the master back to the VCU. Really cool. The goal, in simplest terms, is to make sure that the batteries get charged in a safe manner. So if it sees a bad cell, which it can do, it'll isolate that cell and give you information back. If it sees a heavy current draw or an overcharge, it can see all that and it can balance the battery. One of the analogies that I've used time and time again is to think of an ice tray when you're filling it, you're gonna have water running into one of the areas for a cube, but all the others are still empty. So as you're pouring it just one area, you're gonna sort of tilt it and fill it. But if one is overfilling all the time, then you have to be concerned about that. The BMS will actually let you know that you either have a, a cell that's overcharged or undercharged, and the goal is to keep everything as balanced as possible. And again, that adds longevity to the battery pack itself. So that's one of the reasons the BMS is so critical. Safety, reliability, and adding life to your battery pack itself. If you're running our CD7 or CD5 display, it's gonna be right up in front of you. I actually had a page through that little 52 millimeter gauge, which, you know, it's, it's small and it's a lot of information, critical information at that, but with the CD5 up in the center, there'll be a lot more information right in one screen. So at a glance, I'll be able to see where I'm at with my batteries, the conditions, the current draw, and even predicted range. So those are things, 
again, taking some of the, the concern of, am I gonna make this long journey with this vehicle, takes it out of the equation. It gives you an idea of how, how far you have to go. Right now, we're sitting at a really, really slight incline, right? And I'm probably holding two, three percent, at least on the throttle, just to hold, because we don't have a creep. Um, and if I let go, we just start immediately rolling back. When we're rolling back, we grab it, you know, it could be a little grabby. The easy you know, thought is like, hey, just left foot brake it, but in this case, we can't. Um, or we can, but it's really cumbersome, so it's not realistic. Um, the other opportunity is to heel toe to hold it. Again, a bit of a reach, but you can do that to hold it. Um, but the ultimate is to have creep mode set up, so we don't have to worry about it rolling back on us. So part of that is, uh, like I noticed a vibration, we, a little bit of shuddering. Yep, that's just a low speed to this motor. I think it's a it's a lower power motor, so it's mm -hmm. not you know, not hitting real hard or real smooth. So, because it's sort of a one-to-one, -one, right? Uh, you're gonna pick up some of the pulsations at lower motor speed, like that, you can barely feel. Yeah, and that, you can't do anything about that. So we're in low mode right now. Oh. So now we're in high range. And this is one of the challenges that we're having. We're talking about maintenance throttle. So that's when you're, you're cruising down the freeway and you're, you're maybe creeping up on someone and you want to just come off throttle just a little bit but it seems as though the vehicle has sort of a hard time finding a happy medium between XL, Coast, and Regen. So as you lift off a little bit you can barely feel right now there's a, there's a shutter or a, a, a little bit of a jerk motion back and forth but it's really it's challenging for the driver because it's almost like you, you're, you're on the brake but you don't want to be on the brake you just want to be coasting up so that's one of the one of the challenges with the way the regen is set up right now. Also, one of the other challenges is that if you hit a bump, this thing sprung really hard because it's lower. So you hit any bump, your foot tends to stab the throttle, come off the throttle. Because it's an EV, you have that instantaneous current draw or D, you know X cell or D cell. So it's almost like we need to put a little bit of a filter to dampen that to prevent that. Because every time you're doing it, you're consuming energy that's really not needed to be consumed because you're not trying to stay up the throttle and move. You're just trying to maintain your vehicle speed. So we can, with the VCU, we feel like we can put a filter in that and sort of dampen some of that out. So that'll be helpful as well. Again, a range extender, so a little bit, a little bit more help there. There was no other way of managing that until the VCU came along where you can have a true can base pedal and then put in a torque curve and now we're gonna work on filtering. So we can actually filter that so these little tiny stabs on, on a bump, when you're going down the freeway and it's bumping a little bit, you can actually begin to filter some of that out. There goes, you just felt that little bit of a, a jerk off the lines because it started to roll back. We're on a tiny grade right now. You've probably seen the camera itself, the vehicle lunging back and forth. That's not me doing it with the throttle, that's just the vehicle itself or the inverter looking for, you know, looking at that signal saying, okay, what do you want me to do? You want XO, you want Coast, you want Regen. Yeah, we want maximum Regen we can get, but not at the price of making it so it's a sort of a shuttery ride. Now on the, the EV conversion that we have, we're gonna be able to tune that out because the Regen demand on just a slight lift on the throttles can be lighter. And then they're gonna roll in the Regen heavier as you come further off the throttle, as it should be. All good stuff. Okay, so we actually did a really nice walk around rear, center, front of the vehicle. I mentioned some of the more technical parts we're going to touch on, and I'm going to bring in Sam. Sam's with our sales team and actually does a tremendous amount of work in the field, and he can get into the nitty and gritty of what the BMS does and how it works and how it functions, and also different battery configurations. So next video, watch for Sam. His nickname is Laptop Sam. I hope you learned a few more things about what we're doing on our EV side. It's AEMEV.com. If you liked it, well, we really hope you enjoyed this. If you like what you saw, f me. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for watching. Um, if you, why is this hard for me? I don't know. Like, like to subscribe. With this. Like. this could be the whole video right here. Really hope you enjoyed what we shared today. Please hit like, and don't forget, you already know this, but hit the bell for notifications so when next video drops, you're first in line. That was stupid. <laughs> Does it have to be all one? You can cut this up, right? So I'm sure that we got this. Hit the like. We're, we're demanding them to hit the like. You're, you're way overthinking this, man. <laughs>